the Scouty Regolith and Aqueous Mineral Stellometry Probe will land ballistically on Mars to characterize the water feedstock at Melis Chasma. A modified version of Adron RM will be used to analyze the regolith composition to determine if there is enough water for human colonization. Over a time period of six months, Scrat will collect and transmit data periodically until the batteries no longer have the capacity to power the payload. Out of a $20 million budget, Scrat only used $11 million, leaving $9 million left. Now on to Mosina to talk about the landing site. So for this mission, we used the landing site selection software called JMARS, which is commonly used by NASA in order to gather data about certain landing sites. And we boiled our landing sites down to three sites, Ehelis Basin, Hadriakis Palace, and Melis Chasma. Ultimately, it boils, boils down to the temperature of each landing site. And we ended up choosing Melis Chasma as our official landing site because of its warmer temperatures due to its proximity to the equator. It's only located about 20 degrees south of the equator, which means that our instruments are more likely to work better in that area and there's less risk of the instruments not working due to the cold and extreme temperatures. So the reason we chose Melis Chasma is because there's an abundance of hydrated minerals in that area and there's also something called the recurring slope linea or RSLs, which show a possibility of more water being present in the area. In addition, Melis Chasma will, is a great landing site for our purpose because it has low elevation, meaning that our probe will be protected from extreme radiation exposure, and there's lots of sites in this exploration zone which are relatively boulder-free, which means that our probe is less likely to get damaged when it lands. Because of the confines of our mass restrictions, we were inspired by Deep Space 2 to do a ballistic approach as our method of descent. We will drop from our orbiter at 250 kilometers above the surface. Our heat shield will protect us as we make our way through the atmosphere, and then afterwards it will deploy, and drag fins will come out with xylon webbing between them to act as a braking mechanism. This should slow us down to around 125 to 175 meters per second. This still lets us have a sufficient energy for our impact to embed the probe in the surface so that we can do the science that we need to do. But the probe itself is designed for this impact to ensure mission success. We've taken the lessons learned and the de design of Deep Space 2 to help ensure our mission success. Uh, for the design, uh, our original weight that we came out to was about 22 kilograms, and now we've gotten it down to 4.7 kilograms, so that we're just underneath the, uh, the weight limit that was originally given to us. Uh, to do this though, we had to make several uh, crucial design changes. One of the main things that we had to do was reduce the waste. Uh, there was a lot of spaces in the design that, that didn't need to be as thick, so we thinned out a lot of the areas, and that's just in general throughout the uh, rear probe, uh, I mean the rear plate, the main body of the probe, and then, uh, but through this thinning, we had to increase the amount of aerogel, which is much lighter than the magnesium alloy that we were originally, or that we are using. Uh, so increasing the, the aerogel has also given us more, more uh, ability to accept shock. Now, uh, another one of the main things that we've done is we've changed the design of the drag fins. Uh, the way that we've changed it, it used to be a, uh, a block, a singular block, and now we've added more of a cup, so that'll be able to capture the, uh, the atmosphere more like, more like a parachute. Um, another one of the main changes that has really strengthened the design and also helped with our weight is this 7.76 centimeter area right here where we're gonna, we've removed essentially the body and added a spring mechanism that'll help absorb most of the impact and it's also gonna, it, it dropped our weight drastically so we were able to make that, uh, that requirement. Adrian RM will measure the abundance of water under the surface of Mars by looking at the neutron albedos produced by the galactic cosmic ray interactions with the surface and subsurface. The experiment will take a minimum of two minutes to collect the water abundance data. However, it can be run for a minimum of 20 seconds and a maximum of two hours, depending on how much data you want to receive. Once the data is collected, the lander will send the data straight to the probe, which will then send the data to ground control where it will be processed and analyzed by scientists. The accelerometer is there to give information about impact speeds 
and to allow for calculations on depth that our probe will sink into the Martian soil. We are using two SAFT LM33600 batteries that will, that will provide about 74 watt hours of power to our probe. Uh, Adron will consume about five watts whenever it runs and the accelerometer uses 0.02 watts for the short period of time that it will be there. Uh, there will also be a radioscopic heater unit on board to keep all the electronics in working uh, at working temperatures, uh, including the telecommunication package that will communicate with a separate lander and then from the lander back to the orbiter. Our probe will also have a piezotronics model 352A92 accelerometer on board. So for testing and safety, we made a list of personnel hazards that may cause injury to those on sites and safety precautions to prevent those hazards, such as avoid standing near the launch and landing areas and <laughs> do not attempt to catch any falling components. Personnel working on site will also be required to, to wear protective gear, including construction hats and safety goggles in case of falling debris and cloud plumes and dust disturbance. Additionally, the testing will comply with the safety regulations of the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and the Federal Aviation Administration. A range safety team and a launch operator will be on site to implement our safety regulations. So for the earth and safety environmental phase, we cover the radiological consequences that certain materials would cause to the environment itself, as well as the air quality, noise, and water quality for the environment, for wildlife, and local communities uh, within. Uh, also, we covered the plutonium and other materials that are hazardous, as well as uh, how will we keep them in a controlled environment that are up to the uh, Kennedy Space Center standard, as well as the Cape Canaveral Air Force uh, Station standards. Uh, we also took into account some mission risks and ran some simulations, software simulations, uh, as far as launch accidents and accidents for different probabilities that might occur, uh, taking into account debris as well as any other radiological uh, consequence that may be impacted due to the accident. For educational purposes, we are going to be adopting an approach which utilizes the use of social media. It is a well-known fact that the majority of the population today owns some form of social media account. So by using What's left over in our budget, we will be paying for sponsored tweets and posts on Twitter and Instagram and any other form of social media in order to educate the population about our mission and its importance. Mm -hmm. In terms of public outreach, we will be holding separate events, both focusing on Mars Day at the local Orlando Science Center and a local university. We will be holding presentations as well as demonstrations with objectives of reaching an understanding of the basics of space probes along with the importance of studying the surface of Mars. We will also be holding children's camps at the Kennedy Space Center where we will be hosting separate classes for children of all ages so that they can learn about space as well as have a fun time doing it. 